take two. Hi, it's Diane. Uh, today is October 22nd, 2022. I got interrupted by a stupid political phone call. Okay, soapbox for a moment. If you can legally vote in the U.S., do it. Your, it it's very easy to believe that your, your one vote doesn't matter in the overall picture, but it does because your vote and my vote and our neighbor's vote and this person's vote together. The true power in the U.S. comes from the people. Make your voice heard. Make sure you're registered. If you can legally vote, maybe you just turned 18. Maybe you had an address change, a name change. There's a number of reasons that it's worth just checking. And I know for us this year, the place where we actually have to vote has changed. I mean, we've lived here 25 years and this will be the fourth time it's changed physically. In our, because of redistricting and all that stuff. So just take time. Are you registered? Do you know where you're going to vote? Do you know uh, who you're going to vote for? Just start looking. And particularly the local issues like here where I live, we have city council, mayor, we have our state governor, which we need to get rid of emperor walls. Okay, just someone else in there. And take time, uh, study a few candidates here, study an issue here, and by the time you're ready to vote, you'll go in and go, yeah, ding, 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 no, 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 yes, 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 and you're done. So if you can legally vote, do it. Off my soapbox. What is this video? This is not a regular update video. This video, I had to say that because I got interrupted by a it's like, I did not give you permission to call me. I'm a registered voter, but not a registered with a particular political party. So get off my phone. Anyway, I want to go through my whips as I look toward 2023 stitching. I know what starts I definitely want to have. I'm trying to figure out which one to do January 1st, but, um, I know the ones I'm going to have and I'll show those at some point, but I also have these others that are already started and some of them, I don't have any projects I absolutely hate. I don't. Um, and yes, Persephone will be on my list. She's my oldest one. I do have some progress on her. I don't think she's in this batch though. Um, so whenever we come across her, I'll show my progress because I've added to her for what go October, 2022. Um, she's not done. She's not close to done. But I'd say she's maybe a third, a quarter to a third done. She's one I've gotten in a fight with in the past. And that's why she's my oldest. She'll be on my list, uh, hopefully to complete next year. But I have things kitted here that I could use those supplies for something else. And it's not because those projects are bad or those patterns are bad. It's just they're not calling to me right now. And sometimes when you have the right project in the right mindset, it's done, you know? So that's what we're doing. And as uh, my family gears up for deer hunting season, I will definitely be more quilting um, during November while they're gone because I could have everything out and it's, it's easier because I don't have a set sewing room. Um, this is my bedroom and that's my bookcase. I will talk about this quilt. This quilt I made last year, um, this is one of the versions, I made two versions, and I will link this pattern, I think it's called the Tale of Two Gnomes, but I will definitely link this pattern below, you just don't need to see my messy bookshelf. Uh, as a homeschooling mom, I have bookcases all over my house, and I'll go through and organize them, <laughs> and then a week later, yeah, because you need books. You need books. In our history literature, we're reading real books. So uh, we're in, we're getting right up to the beginning of World War I. That's where we're at historically. Very rich amount of material at that time in history, but also, you know, and, and not all good, not all bad. Uh, there's a lot to digest in that period of world history. So, um, I have
have, I had to pull all those books and put other books back and rotate, so it's always a mess. So I covered it with this quilt. This quilt is, I can't remember if it's twin size, um, but these, I love, I love gnomes. I love gnomes. And I actually ordered a, a cross stitch pattern that's a gnome, because I love gnomes. And so I did these, it's the first time doing this kind of applique and um, I love their beards. So now for deer season, I will be quilting, as in taking a pieced top and doing all the little lines on it. I um, will also be piecing, there's a quilt block of the month I'm very behind on, I need to get caught up on. And then I bought that one in Rochester, if you watched my last, I think two videos ago, I showed a kit um, that I had bought at a quilt shop and it's my second quilt kit. I like quilt kits because everything's there. Uh, actually, it's my third. Because um, there is a quilt I need to finish as a gift for a friend. And um, then I want to tackle that one too. So maybe I can get to quilting this. Because like on the beards, I want to do little vertical lines. And um, this guy's got a zigzag two different beards and this guy is just triangular here so I want to have a little I, I'm I'm not as experienced with the quilting part of it when you put the lines on it and the backing on and batting and I have I have the backing I might not have batting for this one I think this one I need to get batting for but that's what I'm going to be doing while they're hunting so um thought I'd get them out air them out and have a background that's not too distracting, hopefully. I'll be writing these projects down so I can make my list. And we'll see where this leads. Chances are I'll have to do more than one video. And these are going to be whips and kitted pieces. And again, I might unkit or remove something as a whip and use those supplies for something else. So we will start with this one. This one is uh, from the Gift of Stitching magazine. They had a, is it a series of the month? Um, yeah, I can't remember how they worded it, a mystery of the month. And it made a piece that Deb from Country Stitchers showed on one of her videos because she has finished it and has it on her wall and then the person who owns the rights to the pattern uh, she republished it and I will link it below because you can you can purchase it's called the gift of stitching magazine it was a digital cross stitch ma it's a wonderful magazine and so I bought all of the issues there were 72 issues and um, you can buy either all the issues or you can buy just the issues that have the patterns. Um, I can't remember how many, how many blocks, I'm thinking 12 blocks, but I could be wrong on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, I think 11, 12. Um, this is just a mock-up of what it looks like. To give you an idea of what it looks like. I don't have an actual picture of the finished piece. I'm stitching mine on 40 count white and I have three months done. I was working on a fourth. One, two, three, yes. So I have England part two, this guy, the roses. This one was um, Ireland, I believe. And then this one with the ship, uh, Netherlands Dutch. And then this border down here, Spanish. So what this overall piece is supposed to reflect are different stitching styles and motifs from around the world. And I am, it was originally charted for Dinky Dyes, I believe. I love dinky dyes, but 
I didn't invest in the dinky dies for this piece. She also gives you uh, DMC alternatives and possibly dental arts alternatives. I know overdyed. There was at least a, a selection of overdyes, but what I chose to do is I went through my collection and I'm using a variety of overdyes from some places that are not available anymore, such as Carrie's Creation, Cottons, and um, Fiberlicious, and I know I have Dental Arts and Classic Color Works and probably Weeks in, thrown in here. I just went chose, I pulled the DMC and then chose an over dyed that was really close. Plus I have a petite treasure braid for some gold accents on some of the motifs. So um, I'm using one strand over two threads on that piece. But I will link the Gift of Stitching magazine below. They have a website and you can order either all 72 issues or just the 11 or 12 issues that have all the patterns and then you can still purchase them. This one is in a bag I made and it is Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. And I still love this piece. It's been a lot of fun. And I'm going to, I, I'm using the called for, well there are some DMCs called for, but she also calls for uh, classic color works and weeks, so I'm using the called for colors. One strand over two threads on 40 count fiber on a whim. Cream and sugar. These are folded and I have them at different places. This is where it's at. Again, I'm using the call for colors, one strand over two threads, 40 count cream and sugar by Brown and Wim. Love by Brown and Wim. Their fabrics are really, really nice to stitch on. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, this is one that I have. Another piece in, but I don't have it started, so I'm just going to pull that one. I don't even have a piece of fabric for it anymore. Come to my garden, I have in the same bag all the flosses, but I might use the flosses for something else. This one is another bag I made. I actually messed up. It was supposed to be that style, and I messed up and put this on the bottom, and I thought, well, I'll just see what it looks like. But uh, this is Lady Liberty by Kesslin. And I am using the called for Gloriana silk, one strand over two threads on 40 count. No, I'm sorry. This is one. Yeah. I'm using Gloriana silk. I'm using it on 25 count Lugana. One strand over one thread. And I do have a board back here. Let me grab it real quick. There we go. You always try and plan for these videos and then there's always something you forget. And here is where I'm at. So, whoops. You can see that's one strand of Gloriana. I think it's called Crimson. Yeah, Crimson and Pacific Blue. So there's only two colors of silk on this piece. And then the white is just the fabric. So I'm doing one strand over one thread. Am I doing full cross or am I doing half? I am doing full cross. So it's a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. But I finish each stitch as I go, and that has made it much easier. Um, each stitch as it go, because it's an overdyed silk, but also I think it prevents my stitches from slipping under the threads. So that's one over one. 
Lady Liberty. Now there are a number of patterns that I have with that same title, but that is by Kesslin. And 100% of the pattern, the proceeds from that pattern, 100% goes to Wounded Warriors in honor of her father, according to the back of the pattern. This one, um, this is one I have not started. So I, I'm gonna put the ones I haven't started over here so I can decide how I want to proceed on them. If I want to unkit them and do them another time or how I'm going to proceed. Now this one was a gift from a friend. Um, it's called Common Ground by Just Nan. She started it and so she um, just chose to stitch on other things and didn't feel that this was something that she would finish so she passed it on to me which was amazing. And she's an amazing person. And it is, I'm going to keep the original fabric because it does involve a few specialty stitches, not a huge amount, but also some um, beads. And I want to make sure everything fits. And it's called, uh, let's see, this is 28 count. I'm not sure if it's a raw or a natural. I'll have to look at the pattern. This is her stitching. Although I did add some down here. So this is two strands over two threads. And she sent me what she had received except for the DMC, which is fine. I had plenty of DMC, plenty. Um, let's see. It's a 28 count natural linen. So I definitely want to tackle that one again. It's another reason to go through to remind myself what I already have started and uh, encourage myself to finish you know, what I have started. That's why I started them. I hope you... My, my youngest two sons are out there. Uh, one year for a gag gift, the kids got my husband a no button that you push it just says no and, and a whole variety of ways and that's what they're playing with at the moment. Hopefully you can't hear that too much. This one. Oh, this is Paradise Lost by Plum Street. I saw this finished and on the wall at Keepsakes in StitchCon 2021. And I just fell in love with it. I, I don't remember ever seeing this pattern. But again, on, from the picture, it's one of those you see the model and it sells you on it. So um, it's charted for NPI and DMC. The stitcher at Keepsakes changed everything to, to General Arts. So what I did is I pulled all the DMCs and changed it all to overdyes, variety of overdyes that I have in my collection. And here's where I'm at one strand over one thread on 40 count affogato. So I want to say that's fiber on a limb. Look at my label. I'm sorry. Incorrect. Seraphim Tobias. And again, these are not the call for colors. I just chose something that was very, very close to the DMC equivalents. Some Gentle Arts, Weeks, Classic Color Works, Carrie's Creation, Fiberlicious, maybe a, an oddball I, I just picked up somewhere. Um, so I will share my, I don't know if you call it a conversion, at some point if anybody's really, really interested. But it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And um, the Stitcher passed away before she finished that piece, so Barb from Keepsakes finished it in her honor, and she changed some of the wording, and uh, Barb let me know, I talked with Barb when I was in Cincinnati, and she let me know where and how she changed it in case I wanted to change it, 
Okay, yeah, this one's not started either. That's just kitted. Oh, this one. Leela Studio. With the needle too. Forty count. It's natural or flax. Natural linen called for colors, one strand over two threads. And here is where I am at. So I have the side border complete. This is as far down as it goes. And I have one more box. Um, as the, I, I wanted that box to reflect the fact that you know, I have 14 children and maybe put my wedding year in there somehow. I haven't quite figured that all out. So that's one reason I put this away. Um, plus I met my whip go goal of one box. So um, for whatever month it was pulled. So I want to figure out how I want to reflect that. But um, there's two children pictured in the original pattern. Obviously I have more than that. And putting 14 children in there will not fit. But there's some flowers in the background and I thought, well, maybe I could do 14 flowers or somehow, somehow reflect my family. But again, I am using the called for colors. I have one of the first copies or sets of these charts. And the reason I want to pull that out is it says maple syrup. The color maple syrup is a classic color work. It's not, it's actually a general arts and Maple syrup is one of the general arts currently difficult to find. But if you have that chart, do realize if you're trying to look for maple syrup, it's not a classic color work color. Everything else is on that, on that pattern. This one, also a Plum Street sampler. This is the day. It was a market exclusive for a while, but I do believe it's available to everybody now. Uh, market 2022 if I remember correctly I am using I subbed out some of the colors that I didn't have it calls for DMC classic color works and weeks and so I used what I had um, but I also subbed out for my own collection and this is on 40 count flax and I was working on getting the mortar. I have all the bricks done, but I need to put the mortar in and then the steps here and then start working on the other parts of that piece. One strand over two threads on that piece. It's a really nice pattern. I think Paulette does a really good job choosing her symbols because it's very annoying when you have two symbols that are extremely close. I'm gonna pause for just a second. Okay, uh, this is a bag I made. I forgot to show the bag. Uh, this is another one I made. Another one I made. And another one I made. So you've seen those projects. So this is the day. One street. And what was this one? With the needle. I really like Leela Studios patterns also. Uh, they're very nice to read. She um, she chooses good symbols also. Meaning you can differentiate between them pretty easily. Now this one, I don't think I have started, do I? Oh, this was Liberty Games, which I finished. Oh, yeah, I don't have that one started, so I'm going to put that over here for kitted stuff. This one and a bag I made. Erica Michaels. Be like a crow. This one um, has several different parts to it. 
So this one is the on the silk gauze that came in the pattern. I know she's had an issue getting silk gauze and so some of her patterns don't come with it anymore. But you could definitely stitch this on linen. I had someone ask if I could do a tutorial on how to stitch on silk gauze. It's still on my radar. It really is. It's just I haven't had time to do that. I'm using the... Am I using DMC? She gives the pattern calls for... What does the pattern call for? DMC, or sorry, it calls for gentle arts or weeks with DMC alternatives listed. And I think I'm using the call for. That's a black, I might be using 310. But this one also has Naughty or Nice in here. I finished this last year, so I'm just gonna pull that out to file it in my box. And I also, this has a berry in it with a crow. Don't have very much done on it. I think it goes this way actually. No, I think it goes this way. To be a strawberry, but I don't have very much done. And that is 40 count. It's Fiberlicious. Because I love Fiberlicious fabrics. Um, good question. Did I write it on here? Chalk Latte. Chalk as in C-H-A-L-K. Latte, L-A-T-T-E. I do not know if that color is still available. It's like most fabric dyers, she changes out colors periodically. But I got that in a uh, fabric of the month with her. I love her fabric. Her fabrics are fabulous to stitch on. And her customer service is fabulous. Let me make sure, yeah, I did that one already. This one was a new start this year, and it is on 36 count antique white Edinburgh linen. I'm trying to find a picture. There it is. Cardinal points. This is between collaboration between Long Dog Samplers and Gentle Arts. I am using the called for colors, one strand over two threads. I still have it on my Q-snap here, so I'm trying to organize it. And I have just the little corner done. Just that little corner. And this grind guard was made by Barbara Dietz, truly into stitching. If you're looking for a source for grand guards. I've made a few, but if you're looking for another source. Wet Freedom Ring, Lila Studios. This one I had intended on working and finishing this year, but when I pulled it out, I just couldn't get into it. This beautiful piece. But I will get this one done. But I still like it. I pull it out and I just it's just still so stunning. I am using the call for colors on 36 count properly primitive by under the sea fabrics. One strand over two threads. And here's where I'm at. I got the big building done. I need to just get the smaller motifs done. And I actually started down here on the people. There's three men, maybe four men and a woman, um, representing the Revolutionary War. So it's still a very, very beautiful piece. Um, I just, it just didn't call to me. And I have it, oh, I didn't show that bag. I have this one in a Let Freedom Ring bag that I made myself in Bonnet's tutorial. And it literally says Let Freedom Ring on here. Yep, right here. Um, and I made this one with the 
copies. So, take those. <clears throat> I think I have another Let Freedom Ring also. But that one's by Leela Studios and then Cardinal Points. By Long Dog. Oh, this one. Oh, I got this one's calling to me now. I knew that would happen. Some of these would call to me. I do have plans for the rest of the month stitching wise. This one piece I'm getting close to that. I can see the end line, the finish line, and I keep working on her. Greatest Lost by Stamper Cove. Now, these are bands and there are specialty stitches in here. So if you're not into specialty stitches, this is probably not the best pro uh, pattern for you. But her patterns are stunning. And I am using the called for... What is it, Averis Well? A Verisois. On forty count platinum. I'm using well it depends on the band, because sometimes I, I'm for the most part the basic cross stitch I'm using one strand over two threads. And so far that's worked fine. I have not come across where I need to have two strands. So here's where I'm at. So band one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if you're gonna do this pattern, do realize that like this is the main band. So this is band one, two, three, four. And these little ones that kind of top and bottom they refer to that as a different, under a different initial in the pattern. It was a little confusing at first to figure out what they were talking about. But this little band mirrors this little guy to kind of frame that band in. And the same here. And a lot of the bigger bands have that. But her illustrations are so clear. And once I figured that out, oh, I need to zigzag this one. So I'm going to leave this guy out. Because um, I had my sewing machine, I had to sew something really quick for my husband. Um, her illustrations of the specialty stitches are beautiful. I did have to practice one of them, though, a couple times. Or maybe it's one coming up that I will definitely need to practice a little bit, so I'm just going to do that in the margin. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't show the bag. That was my Ann Morrison bag. Here. When I finished Ann Morrison, this one went into there. So here's this bag. This is my Bristol sampler, which will probably come I need to keep this out because it's going to come up again on Whipgo by the end of the year. This is from the Gifted Stitching Magazine, the final issue, which I believe is May, May, June 2012. And it's a Bristol sampler. The DMC they called for, I thought was too bright of red, so I changed it. I am using 816 instead of whatever they called for. Or is that the one I'm using? Or was that the one they called for? Yes, I'm using 816. One strand over two threads on 40 count white. And some of these pieces, you start wrestling the fabric to show them. So here's where I'm at. So this is the width of the piece, but I have a lot more to go. And for my whip go, it will be five days on Bristol when it's called, either in November or December. So that one I definitely have to keep out. It will be called. I'm also doing this now because I'm having a minor procedure done on my leg and I probably won't be able to get around as much for a few days. Okay, that one definitely is kitted and started, and that one is kitted not started. Okay, so that's all those. Let me step away for just a moment. And pull these guys. What am I doing on time? Okay.
this when it started in this bag. It is Liberty Quaker by Luminous Fiber Arts. Saw the model at StitchCon 2021. It was just adorable. Her pieces are adorable. I bought two or three of her patterns. This is the only one I've started so far. This is on 36 count ice. It's a fiberlicious. I want to say ice crystals. Nope, sorry, ice flowers. Fiberlicious, 36 count. One of my fabrics of the month. And it's part of her club. And here's where I'm at. This calls for over dyed. I am using over dyeds, but not necessarily the called for. Although I think the red is the called for because I had it, but the blue is not. And the white, I'm not sure if you can see these little snowflakes. Um, are there, this are a Quaker motif and then a snowflake. You can see it in person. I'm using B, no, I'm sorry, 3865 because I don't remember what's called for. What is called for? Linen, I think. Yeah, but I wanted it to stand out a little more, so I chose that. I also have these little snowflake charms I might add when it's all said and done. But it's such a cute piece. Such a cute piece. Again, Liberty Quaker Luminous Fiber Arts. This one also has one kitted in here. Oh, I need this one for 2023. Uh, I'm going to do the Garon Stitchery Designer Focused. And I'm finding my scissors too. I'm trying to collect those. So I know how many pairs I have and where they're at. Um, the designer focus, one of the designers next year, that's the only pattern of hers I have. So I wanted to make sure to pull that one. Where is the last? The Bristol. Bristol. I wanted to make sure to pull that one out because I still need a piece of fabric for it. And I think a couple flosses. So I'm just going to put that aside. And I have a couple of project bags in there that I can load up. This one, Glendon Place. Which is not in the Garon Stitchery for next year, but there's so many designers. I'm sure he had a hard time choosing. Tiramisu. One of the dessert mandalas. I have finished Grasshopper Pie. And this was gifted to me by my friends with the beads and the silks and then I chose the fabric this is picture this plus 28 count truffle now it's gonna be a little hard to see because the fabric is very close to this particular color of silk but when I put the other this is the lightest silk so um, beyond the natural when I put the other dark colors it will pull it out I have I have confidence that it will that's 28 count truffle by picture this plus and um, with the dinky dies two strands over two threads this one is oh sunset by rosewood manor I also have some lies in the same bag, hence the plastic to divide them. A uh, sunset. I think I saw this at Galleria, the model. I'm pretty sure I did. I am using the call for colors on the Fiberlicious fabric. I'm pretty sure this is a Fiberlicious fabric. Here's where I'm at. I have the center medallion done. Um, what is this at? Sorry, figured you didn't. You heard me sneeze twice last video. You didn't need to hear me sneeze this time. I also have sunset in here, but or sunrise, excuse me. Once in a blue moon. Fiberlicious. 
Again, her fabrics are fabulous to stitch on. That's 36 count, one strand over two threads. And here's the matching one, Sunrise. So this is Sunset, Sunrise. I have not started this one. And I do not have it on my 2023 to start. Because I have a lot of Rosewood Manor to start in 2023. But I'd really like to get Sunset complete before I tackle that. That uh, count once, stitch twice. Melina, I thought she had sunset done. This is my bag. Sunset. Rosewood Manor. Oops. Okay, let's finish this little bin and then I'll have to do a part two. This one's not started. This one is not started. Not started. Not started, I don't think. It is a Nora Corbett. Miss Columbian Nymphalid. I have, there's six in this particular group. I have allergies, that's what's going on. Um, it hits me this time of year, every year. There's six in this little pixie series, Butterfly Misses series. I have three of them stitched and actually up on my wall upstairs. I have the other three patterns. This is the one I'm working on now. Called for colors. I put her in this bag because it was only what I had available at the time, but that's okay. I like Christmas and it brings me joy. This is another beautiful fiberlicious fabric. Thirty-two count. Okay. Here's the card. A dance of autumn. And here is where I'm at. So there's a lot of the wing going, and some of her bodice here in her dress. So these are not huge, they're fun to stitch. And with this whole series, these six, I had to put them on a, the other three are on a very bright fabric. And, um, so she had to be like her sisters. actually has two in it. Okay. Uh, Autumn Forest Quaker by Sticky Dean Sticky Dean von der Weinberg. I am not German so hopefully I didn't butcher that too bad. And this one is on I have two projects in here, so it would be just a moment while I make sure I've got the right piece. 40 count. Summer khaki. And, uh, it's my art linen. It is charted for DMC, and I'm using one strand over two threads. Very nice patterns from 
this German company and I will be stitching others of theirs at some point. Rose Quaker, same company. And again, DMC, try for DMC. This is 40 count flax. Showing you the front and not the back. These motifs are just beautiful. Just beautiful. And again, it's DMC. It started DMC. I'm using DMC. You know, sometimes DMC gets kind of a bad reputation, but a lot of over dyed gloss is DMC based. Not every. Not everyone, but a lot of them are. And I will tell you it's DMC based. So obviously it's a quality product. On this side. This one, Ding Dong Ornaments by Heartstring Samplery. And I'm using the Call for Colors on, I think this is Antique Country Mocha. Yeah, this is Antique Country Mocha. I'm not sure the count. Do I stay on the thing? 36 count. Is it not natural? I don't know why I said 36 count natural. It's not natural. Um, it's definitely Antique Country Mocha but I'm not sure the count. So I have one of them complete the ding. So there are four parts, or four more parts I need to do. Did I use one strand or two strands? That would help me know the count. One strand, so I bet you it's 36 count antique country mocha on, uh, it says natural, but this is not natural. This is antique country mocha. So I used one strand called for a fabric, or fibers, excuse me. This bag was made by, um, her name was Wendy. I tried to find her, her website and it, it was down. So I don't know if she's making bags anymore. This one, Mirabilia. You knew there had to be at least one Mirabilia. I have 20 started. Moonflowers. This is 32 count Ursula under the sea. Oops. Under the sea fabrics. So I started her at the moon, but then when I picked her up again to stitch on her again, I started toward the middle. I'm not sure if the moon is correct. So started her up here and then I started her again down here so I'll work my way up and if I need to fix this I'll fix it this fabric is ombre and I have the darkest part at top going to the lightest part because this is where her her gown is and then the moon in the dark part that's how I chose to stitch this one I only have three more and then this, this part will be done. If I go over an hour, then YouTube has a fit. And, and my phone has a fit. Yeah. Gnome bag. Because I like gnomes. And then this one is gratitude or grateful. Gratitude. Heart full of gratitude. Cottage garden samplings, which is one of the Designers for Garon Stitchery 2023, so I'm going to definitely keep this guy out. And there's another scissors. I'm stitching with the called for threads on Fiberlicious. I think it goes this direction. One strand or two strands. The fabric. The fabric is 36 count fall foliage by Fiberlicious, so I'm using one strand. 
Oh, foliage. Called for colors. So, definitely keep this little one out. There's our bag. Seeking refuge. Scarlet House. I was going to say a different designer and I thought, no, wait a minute, that's not right. Uh, this is on 40 count flax. Because I only have a lot to do. This one, Rose Garden Mandala, it's a chatelaine. It is, the pattern is available. It's from the Gifted Stitching Magazine. It was in I say the issue? September 2009. It was in that issue. It is available for purchase as a separate pattern. It's called Romantic Rose Garden on the Chatelaine website. I'm using the called for colors, however many strands they say, on 32 or 28. 32 count Jobelin antique white. And here's one that I don't have a, a full picture to show you. So there's like a four ponds and then there's a fence that goes around. So it's it's over halfway done. But yeah, I've been thinking of purchasing a bigger one. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Ink circles. Baroque. This is my second oldest one. I'm using Swa Cristal from Karen Collection Silk, one strand over two threads on 36 count. Sorry, I have a loose thread stuck in the zipper of this bag. This is um, 36 count white opal Edinburgh and here's the instruction. So the center motif. Swat Crystal was not the call for. I don't remember what the call for was. That's what I chose. This is why I'm thinking of unkidding and tackling another time. Let me see how far I am. <laughs> Savior's Praise. Shakespeare's Peddler. No, I'm going to keep going on it. Lady. The model was stitched by my friend. She is such a lovely, lovely lady in real life. This is a 40 count Beach Brew by r and R. I'm using the called for colors, one strand over two threads. Here's where I'm at. I think I was thinking of, of unkidding this because I, I messed up over here and I'd have to rip all this out and I'm like, but I, I was able to fudge it. So if I had less done, I'd probably scrap it and reuse the project, the fabric for something else, but I think I'll just stick with it. And this is... A Mama Joan bag that I purchased for myself for my birthday two or three years ago. And she also gifted me a lanyard that matched the interior fabric. I've met Joan. She's a very nice lady. She's 
He has an interesting sense of humor. So that is what I'm going to show for this video. I have three more bags. One of them is a 31 bag. So that is, oh, I lied. I got one more to show. And then I'll be done for this video. This is by Cross Stitch Antiques. Made these lines a relic poo. I had trouble with this one because the silk, one of the silks, it just, it blended too much with my fabric or something. So I'm using the NPIs and um, I have picked out some different silks to try. Cause I want this, this rose right here. It just looks like a blob. Even on camera, it just looks like a blob. There's not a lot of contrast between those two colors. So I'm going to rip that rose out in this one here and then use two different, still NPIs, but two different shades to get brighter roses because I love the leaves and the other roses. And then this one is a totally different color. It's just, you can't, there's not a contrast between so you could see the leaves and stuff. And when I asked the designer, she's like, no, that's, that's what it's charted for. It's as close. I just wasn't happy with it, so I'm going to pull those two colors and use a different NPI because I really like this piece a lot. Oh, and it's on 40 count something. Uh, 40 count Affogato by Fiber on a Whim. So that is my. Whips part one. I will see you in whips part two. Have a good day. Bye.